Going for the yellow jersey is a, is a dream of, of our team. Yeah! <laughs> Stage 11 was a monster of a stage, with the riders facing the Col du Telegraph, the Galibier, and the stage finish on the Col de Granon. Vingegaard had beaten Bagatch on longer climbs before, like Mont Ventoux in the 2021 Tour, so today promised fireworks. Vengegaard blitzes the tour and takes yellow tonight. Yeah, it's it's really incredible. Uh, it's hard for me to put words on. Uh, yeah, this is what I dreamt of. Always uh, stage in the tour, and uh, now the yellow jersey is incredible. Very uh, special day for uh, for me. Uh, my first stage win at the at the Tour de France and uh, yeah, a ye yellow jersey. Um, I mean, I could never have done it with without the the help of of everyone. Uh, yeah, especially all the riders today were incredible. We made a plan. We did it perfectly. Also, all of you. We could never have done it without you guys. So. Uh, it's very, very special for me and uh, just thanks a lot to everyone. Cheers. Pogaccio would lose three minutes and slip to third overall behind Roman Bardet, blaming a lack of food and fatigue from following the early attacks. Clearly, Team Jumbo Visma's tactics have paid off. Marc Soler confirmed theories that Pogaccio didn't eat as well as he could have done, stating he saved some food because of the speed on the Galibier. A stage like this shows the importance of teamwork and multiple avenues of attack. Pogaccio had to defend against Roglic, Vingegaard and the other GC contenders, often on his own. By the time the race reached the final rest day in Carcassonne, Team Jumbo Visma suffered a setback. Primoz Roglic had abandoned before the start of stage 15, still suffering from his crash on stage 5, and then another key domestique, Steven Kreiswijk, crashed later that day and dislocated his shoulder, forcing him to quit the race as well. There was speculation that the loss of two of Vingegaard's helpers would be a critical moment, but the team didn't share that pessimism. You have a strong enough team even without Primoz? I mean, the, the team is still really strong. Uh, I have some good guys for the flat, I have some good guys for the, for the mountains still. Uh, of course, it's, it's, uh, it's a loss to, lo uh, to lose Primoz. Uh, but we have to, to look further and uh, now we just have to give our best every day. Stage 18 was the final day in the Pyrenees, the final mountain stage of the Tour de France and the final chance for Tadej Pogacar to take back serious time. However, in cycling, attack is often the best form of defence. Wout van Aert infiltrated the early break once again and that meant that Team Jumbo Visma had a man up the road, ready to act as a potential relay for Jonas Vingegaard or to fall back and help defend his lead if required. On the penultimate climb, Pogacar attacked Vingegaard five times, but every time he was able to respond. Pogacar was laying it all out in an effort to break Vingegaard. They pushed to the limit on the descent, and eventually, they found that limit. Oh, oh Pogacar overcooks. Oh! Oh, crash of the white jersey! Oh. 
Well, look at that. That is a show of true sportsmanship. The battle through the valley wasn't an all-out effort, but it did link the leaders up with Wout van Aert. He set a blistering tempo, pulling Vingago away with around four kilometers remaining. Yeah, this morning I said to uh, to my girlfriend and my daughter I wanted to win for them and uh, I did. So uh, I'm uh, I'm really really happy and and proud that I I won for them and uh, yeah this one is is really for uh, for my two girls at home. Tadej Pogacar lost over a minute in four kilometers, but it didn't matter to him. It was all or nothing. He later said, "I gave it all on the last climb, but I did all I could." The final time trial of the race had been touted as the last hurdle, but in reality it was a formality for Vingegaard. I'd rather have uh, Fiona's beating me than someone else, so uh, then uh, in any way I end up on, uh, with champagne on the table. This is uh, probably the dream of a, a life. Uh, five years ago, I suppose you didn't imagine that you would be sitting right there with that jersey. What does it mean to win the Tour de France? Uh, it means everything. It's it's really uh, it's really incredible. Uh, it's hard for me to, to put words on it. It's uh, yeah, it's the biggest within cycling, and yeah, we did it. Yeah. <laughs> and you had your uh, your girlfriend, your 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 daughter at the finish. You didn't even have to take the phone. That must make it even more special. Yeah, I mean, ha having my two girls on on the finish line means e even more to me. Is there any way that Tale Pogacar could have won this race? Despite this tour being won with a margin of almost three minutes, Vingegaard only unleashed two big attacks on stage 11 and stage 18. In fact, Vingegaard matched or beat Pogacar in the mountains and only really lost time on the cobbles of stage five and the opening time trial. Pogacar took early stage wins and held the yellow jersey for much of the first half of the race. More conservative racing might have served him well, and it's easy to say he should have chased this move or let another move go, but equally, Hindsight is 2020. In the end, Jonas Vingegaard made the most of the hand he was dealt. Team Jumbo Visma was the super team of the 2022 Tour, and their dominance shows the importance of teamwork in professional cycling. Not only did they win the yellow jersey, but they also walked away with Wout van Aert's record-breaking total in the points classification, and Vingegaard victorious in the King of the Mountains competition, marking the first time since 1969 the riders from the same team won the yellow, green and polka dot jerseys. And that is how the 2022 Tour de France was won. It presents the possibility of a fiercely contested rematch in 2023. 
And with so many incredible riders in the peloton, and a promising young cohort as well, we could see this usher in a new golden era for the sport.